I think I'm in focus. So today we're going to be talking about the um, Hollyland Mars 400S. Hey guys, how are you guys doing? Let's, um, let's get some light going in here. So we can see what we're doing. Yeah, it's been, uh, it's been a bit, right? So today we are doing a video that's gonna be a little bit different, a little bit different than what we've done before. And you know what? I should finish these lights here. So make a difference. Are my lights not working? Whoa, there we go. Okay, so sound. Can you guys hear me? I hope you guys can hear me. Let me just double check. All right, test one, two, three. Yeah, this sounds fine. Let me put my little lavalier microphone away here. Oh, some clothing noise. Gonna have to get that fixed in post-production. Um, if you guys hear it, let me know. And last but not least, we should make sure that I am actually in focus. This is where I wanna be standing. And let's, there we go. I think that's a lot better. What do you guys think, am I in focus? I think I'm in focus. So today we're gonna to be talking about the um, Hollyland Mars 400S. It's a wireless transmission system, which is the reason why this is all set up. And let's fire that up. So, I turn it on on the camera. Let's turn this monitor on. And the transmitter is right behind the monitor. So, yep, there we go. Hollyland. Just double check my focus once again since I'm moving around. There we go. Okay. So, this wireless transmitter. I believe is the perfect hybrid transmitter for all of us content creators, but then also anyone who shoots with a crew that has, you know, maybe one to two or even three people on the crew because it makes it really, really convenient. And I know everybody's going to want to know, can you actually pull focus with the Hollyland Mars 400S? And the answer is yes. <laughs> and I know that there are a lot of other videos from other people who've done reviews with the Hollyland Mars 400 where they'll tell you there's latency. And clearly you guys are seeing some of that now. This monitor doesn't have SDI input. So this monitor is being plugged in with HDMI camera that I'm shooting on is a red 8K Helium. That is sending off an SDI signal into the Hollyland Mars 400. So SDI in, HDMI out. And the fact of the matter is, is that different cameras, just like different monitors, have different speeds for their HDMI. And that's the reason why you get latency the actual device themselves, they only really have about a two frame, maybe four frame, between two and four frame delay, which really means you are in fact able to pull focus, just like I pull focus. In fact, I'll show you guys again. Here, I am out of focus. 
very out of focus. And now I'm going to go back into focus. So am I able to do it? And the answer is yes. And all I'm doing is looking at the camera, which it also has this monitor in the frame. And that's how I pull focus. So can you pull focus? The answer is yes. The other thing is if you're an indie filmmaker, right? And let's say that you're working on a passion project or maybe a short film or some other sort of narrative piece that you might be working on. Are you working with actors? Because if you are, then actors know that they need to hit their marks, right? That's why when you're on set, you hear back to one or let's take it from two or let's go from, you know, let's go to the next setup or whatever, because all of these things are pre-planned. So just like I knew that I was going to be standing here, my lens was already preset distance wise as to where it is that I was going to be standing. And that's why when in the intro of this video, I wasn't really in focus. But could someone had been pulling focus while I'm maneuvering back and forth? And the answer is yes, as long as I end up on actual marked spots. And I know someone's going to say, well, if I was using this um, to try to pull focus, say, from a gimbal during a wedding, that can't be rehearsed. And the answer there is, you're right. But hopefully, you have a sense as to what your workable area is. And you have a sense as to what your depth of field is based on where you're going to be shooting from. And most lenses, especially once you stop down to like F2 or F3.2 or, you know, F4, and you're more than six feet away from the camera, you have a very nice cushion of depth of field that allows you to successfully pull focus. But again, maybe that's a conversation for a completely different video. I'm just telling you that for me, as a content creator, as someone who doesn't always roll with a seven or 10 person team, this wireless transmission system works really, really well. One other quick note, kind of a side note here. This is an LG television. <laughs> and this is what I use as my client monitor. And why did I do this? A couple reasons. I used to haul with me the Automos, um, what is that called? The Sumo, Sumo 19. And I know it's got a recorder in it. And now they finally, after a couple of years, decided that they were going to allow you to do the actual switching. Um, I believe it's two streams of 4K and then four streams of 1080. Well, I owned it for the first 19 months of that, um, those two years, where they kept promising that they were going to be doing things, like giving us switching, and it didn't happen while I owned it. Not only is it heavy, it is beefy, it is still made out of plastic, but it has fans that are loud. <laughs> and when I mean loud, I mean they're loud enough to be distracting. If you're, say the microphone is, um, I'm the talent, right? So let's say that, well, I'm the talent in this scenario. So let's say that this is the exact scenario and the monitor is maybe six feet in either direction. I could still hear the fans. That's how loud that monitor is and why it is that I decided I'm gonna to switch to this, which by the way, it costs less than 150 bucks and it works really well. The only thing is I can't battery power it. At least I haven't done the research to find out if I can battery power this thing. Anyhow, you guys are seeing the real live performance of the Mars 400S. Not bad, right? But that's not where it ends. Because what makes the Hollyland Mars 400S special is its ability to also send a signal to wireless devices. 
like this iPad. So let's fire up the iPad. And let's launch the app, which by the way, <laughs> when I got the um, Mars 400, the Hollyland Mars 400, this is a partnership video, by the way. So Hollyland sent the Mars 400S to me before they released it so that I could start using it and then share a video with you on my experience. They didn't tell me what to say. They didn't give me any kind of restrictions. They didn't, um, there, there is, there are no boundaries on what it is that I am allowed or not allowed to say. And you guys should just know that up front, right? So, whoa, it's trying to connect. So let's, um, when it's trying to connect, this happens, right? So this screen, basically it's saying, hey, scan the barcode on the back and I'll show you guys what that looks like here in B-roll. Scan the barcode on the transmitter so that I can then connect to its Wi-Fi network. So what happens is now it's saying, okay, do I want to join it? And of course, we, d we do want to join it, which is what should be happening here. And then you'll see just how fast this fires up. Let me just make sure you guys are in fact able to see it. And there you go. So now, the Hollyland Mars 400 is not just sending a signal to its, you know, from its um, receiver, from its transmitter to its receiver, but now my iPad became a receiver too. So this is of course happening via Wi-Fi. Can I just tell you guys that, and I'm going to show some B-roll here of me actually working out on some of these projects where I took my camera, went out on the project. I brought production monitors, I brought client monitors, but it was an event and the room was so crowded that I essentially had a five foot by three foot workspace area available to me. And the manager who was overseeing this entire project had half of the space that I had available to them. So there was no way I'm going to give them a monitor. And I also don't have like one of those director monitors where you, you can just put it over your, your neck and then, you know, allow it to dangle here. Um, I don't have one of those. So the Hollyland Mars 400 came in clutch because all I had to do was pull the uh, iPad out of my, um, my, my pack, my backpack, which comes with me every single time that I'm on set and fire this up. I hand them the iPad and all of a sudden they are able to monitor what it is that I'm doing and get them that extra confidence that what I needed to capture for them for that project was actually going to happen. There's just no other way around it. Now, if we want to compare, and I know that there are other systems that allow you to send signals via Wi-Fi. Trust me, I know this. The one that Teradek makes, which is the Server Pro, Teradek Serve Pro or Server Pro, something like that. It's basically a Teradek unit. It's blue and it allows other devices to connect to it via Wi-Fi, like an iPad, very similar, right? When they announced it, they were actually going to make two different versions, the Teradek Serve and then Teradek Serve Pro. The Serve was going to limit how many devices, like I think it was one, maybe two devices that could connect to it. And then the Serve Pro was going to allow, I believe, four devices. And if I'm wrong, somebody please co uh, correct me in the comments to actually connect to it. As it turns out, they only released the most expensive one. And that one happens to be in excess of $1,200 for Wi-Fi, <laughs> right? This system that allows us to do not just SDI, not just HDMI, but both, and then also Wi-Fi cost in the $600 range. I think it's like $640 or $630 something. The prices vary just a little bit, so you guys might want to check out what that actually looks like in the link below. But 
this very inexpensive unit that has what I would consider low latency gives me 99% of the functionality of a Teradek unit, which by the way, the Surf Pro also has latency. So not only am I keeping more money in my pocket, but I'm also given the ability now to expand into other systems. And when I say expand, this Hollyland Mars 400 system gives you the ability to buy another receiver so you can have one transmitter from whatever the camera is and two different receivers connected to the same system while at the same time doing Wi-Fi connections. It's pretty good, right? Now, you are limited to four Wi-Fi devices. And in fact, why don't we fire up my, my phone? This is the iPhone 11 Pro Max. And let me just get the app here going. Holly View. Let's see if this connects by itself. But this way we could see both. So it's asking me to scan again. So I'm gonna have to go do this. So bear with me one second. Okay, and just like before, I'm now asked if I wanna join, which I will. And then here you guys will see just how fast this fires up. Oh, I should turn my volume down because of course, these transmitters, or the transmitter actually transmits both video and audio. Now, when you're doing, I'm gonna double check my focus, because you know, I moved, so, and this, and I'm shooting this by myself. Here we go. There are a couple of limitations, right, that you guys should know about. One of them is, if you're connecting via HDMI from your camera, and then transmitting it, you're able to do 1080, 60p. If you're doing SDI, you're doing 1080, 24p. So just know that. I know that um, that probably isn't going to be a deal breaker for anyone with Canon cameras. Um, one thing that you guys might want to be aware of again is the fact that Canon cameras straight up output in, actually, I'm going to regress a little bit. The Canon C line of cameras, like the C300 Mark II and the C200, have the ability to output 1080 60p, or in the C300 Mark II case, it can also output 4K. If you're outputting 4K, know that the transmitter is not going to be able to read the signal. So just be aware of that. A couple other notes. So I use the big beefy batteries and I'll show you guys what these, what I'm talking about here in B-roll. The big beefy batteries last me a good five hour shoot without needing to change the batteries. So I do turn off the camera, you know, when I'm like, let's say I have a setup and we get all the shots that we need from that setup. I do turn it off and I also turn off the transmitter. Then once we have the second setup up and running, then the transmitter and the camera, of course, all get fired up again. So there is a little bit of that, but just know that you can count on at least four of those hours with the transmitter and receiver working without actually dropping the signal. This combination, you know, transmitter to receiver, the 400 line of sight range that is advertised, I would say is solid. The Wi-Fi, if you guys know how Wi-Fi works, where essentially it's all the traffic and then it kind of dodges itself out of the way um, to allow other traffic to go through, that is not as stable in longer distances or with multiple walls in between the transmitter and then the these devices. In this building where I'm at now, which is my studio, we have three, six, 
nine. We have nine Wi-Fi networks going and we have Wi-Fi security cameras all across the entire building. So this is congested, but it's not like, you know, downtown Los Angeles in the middle of all the different sky rises congested, but it is congested Wi-Fi space. When I've been out with clients and I've handed them my iPad so that they can monitor, I have yet to see the signal drop. It hasn't dropped. There, I was on a project where I was um, doing a shoot and it took me from indoors to outdoors. It's a little bit of run and gun type of shoot um, where I had to go outdoors and get some some additional clips like an establishing shot of the location where I was at. And I went through three different walls. They're all brick walls. Um, and then I went off probably about 150 feet, maybe 200 feet away from the building to actually get the entire building in the shot. That did cause the Wi-Fi signal to drop, but not this guy. So I'm impressed. Um, if you need or you have a bigger crew or you're working on a larger project and you need more distance or you're trying to get a wireless transmission from, say, a drone that might be carrying your um, your red uh, Monstro up to get an establishing shot, this system probably isn't the right system. But then also, if that's your kind of budget, then spring for the more expensive systems. And by the way, Hollyland has a number of them that you guys can choose from. So I'll be sure to put links on all that stuff down in the notes. What are other highlights that you guys should know about this? So great battery life, great flexibility with the types of signals that it can input as well as output. Obviously, this ability to do this um, with via Wi-Fi is extra special, right? Because I could give it to a producer. I can give it to the set designer. I can give an iPad to the um, costume or makeup person and free up <laughs> space around me so that I can actually operate and do my job because there's nothing worse than someone saying, which by the way has happened to me, where we're setting up, say, a multi-camera shoot or a, an establishing shot type of shoot where the talent is going to be, is actually doing the stand-in work. And then she'll say to me, can I see what that looks like? <laughs> and I'm like, um, so we just put all of this gear and stuff around you because you were going to be stationary for this one shot and you want to see what that looks like. The answer is, of course you can, because I have the ability to give them or even pull out my phone and, and flat out just hand it to them and show it to them if they are too far away from where the production monitors are. So there are lots and lots of advantages for you as a content creator. Now, my buddy Tyler Edwards, he reviewed this unit and I thought it was really clever the way that he covered an event with multiple cameras at opposite ends of the room by himself. Because all he did was put the transmitter on that second camera that was not his A cam, essentially it was his B cam. And then he put a monitor right next to his A cam so that he can at least know that the camera's in focus, the power hasn't cut out, it's still receiving audio. Like that kind of savings allowed one individual to go cover a project with multicam so the production value goes up instantly, right? Charge, well, I don't know if he charged or not, but if, if it was my company, we would have charged for two camera systems, allowing us to make more money for an extra 600 bucks and I can do that all day long. You get what I'm saying? So there are, like I said, lots and lots of advantages and reasons why this is a real good value 
to you as a content creator. So would I recommend it? And the answer is I would because you guys may remember a while back I did a review on the Mars um, 300 which does not offer the Wi-Fi features and that was working out really really well for us for product shoots, for top-down shots, for monitoring myself when, when I'm working like I am right now. It's just super handy to have so that I can actually take a wider frame and still have the confidence of knowing that my stuff's in focus or get objects that might be cluttering up the shot out of the way. All right, here are some other highlights on this particular product. It's got a low battery indicator. So you're not, you don't have to guess when it is that you're going to need to replace your batteries. It allows you to scan your environment, your Wi-Fi environment, where your camera and your receiver actually are so that you can see which channels are free or available or which channels you should avoid. That's a huge plus. I will say that at this point for me, 10 out of 10 times, all I have to do is power up the transmitter, power up the receiver, make sure they're plugged in and obviously have batteries. And I don't need to do any scans and I don't have any issues with signal no matter where I've been. So the automatic scanning that happens within the unit is actually that good. Another really awesome highlight about this Mars 400S is that you can actually choose. Do you want low latency? Maybe you are trying to do that, you know, run and gun, pulling focus as you go. Pick that mode. Or do you want the absolute best possible picture quality from the system? You can set that as a priority or you can leave it in the default, which is what this is running. Essentially, it is taking the best quality that it can in, based on this environment it, with the lowest amount of late, latency that it can based on this environment and then pushing out that signal. And this is the result. If you are interested in this type of unit, I'm sure you've seen other reviews where they tell you all about the things that come with it. Like they give you an extra antenna as an example. They give you an L um, mounting bracket, which is what I'm using to mount it into the back of this TV. The actual build quality of both units is solid metal. So it's some sort of aluminum, I'm guessing, because it's kind of lightweight. The batteries is what makes them heavier, but not heavier to where you want to avoid them. In fact, once you begin using this system, you, it's going to be very difficult for you to go back to not using some sort of wireless monitoring system because it, it really is that good. If you guys have any questions about the product or you guys want to know more about it, again, I'll link below. Feel free to leave a comment, you know, reach out to me, text me, call if you guys have my number. Some of you do. And um, yeah, let's chat. Until next time, I'm Carlos. And this was the Hollyland Mars 400 review. I'll catch you guys later. Take care. Like me